I've got uh, three wonderful looking women with me today uh, from Nityagram, one of the uh, companies from my hometown, Bangalore, performing here at uh, the Confluence. Uh, welcome, uh, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's understand Nrityagram. Nrityagram, for our viewers, I think if you break it down into Nritya and Gram, it becomes very simple. It is a dancer's village, is that right? Yes, it's the dance village. Right. And uh, how did you conceptualize this dance village? It was started in 1990 uh, by my guru, Srimati Pratima Gauri Bedi. And it was visualized as a place where young people could come and dedicate their lives to a chosen form of classical dance. And in India, traditionally, we have learned dance and music in the Gurukula system, where you live with the teacher under the Guru Shishya Parampara. And you imbibe not just uh, technique, but the very spirit of the teacher. So she built a place where young people could come and simply uh, live there without having to think about where their next meal would come from and it would be completely free and sponsored by the institution so that at the end of six years of training you had sufficient um, sufficient talent to be put on a stage in a professional manner so that's how I first came there as the first uh, student to graduate from the first batch 26 years ago how come you chose Bengaluru? Well, I grew up <coughs> partly in Bangalore because my father was an army officer and we, we studied a great deal in southern India and a lot of it was in Bangalore. So I'm a Bangalore girl in some sense. Right. You are a Orissa girl. Tell us, how did you end up in uh, Bengaluru? Well, um, I was introduced to uh, Nrityagram, the concept of Nrityagram. In uh, 1993, I was brought there for a, for a foreign tour of the ensemble. When I saw the place, I had not seen anything before. I had trained in Orissa in Odyssey for a very long time. And I was looking for more, perhaps to dedicate my life to dancing. And uh, there was no place for it. Schools were you go twice a week and learn for a few hours and go back home. But this was a home for dancers. So when I saw this, I fell in love and decided that's going to be my life. And I moved. Mm. <coughs> Pavitra, you're from uh, Bangalore, it looks like. Yes, I am yeah. from Bangalore, born and brought up in Bangalore. My parents have a farm very close to Nityagram. I started as a weekend student at Nityagram. I used to go on Saturday and Sundays. And then after my 12th standard, uh, I chose to become a dancer and that's how I've been there for all these years. And uh, could you tell us a bit of a history of when it all started and how it's growing? Well, it started, I think, uh, in 1987 when she set up a camp uh, and she lived there for two years or three years just building the place. She had a dream and she believed that the land had a destiny of its own and it had used her as an instrument to fulfill its own destiny. And when I came, she still lived in a tent, in a camper. And I remember her, you know, her bed used to be just an iron bed with with the legs sitting on four bowls of kerosene right. because there were so many snakes and scorpions really? and things there all the time. Mm. And she just lived there till she made the place. She believed that this is what had to be done. She had an indomitable will to make things happen. She did not understand the word impossible. And everything we learned from her was by watching her do it and setting an example. And I think so, when she made up her mind to do something, she believed that the universe would conspire to make it happen. And that's how she built the place for people like me, who got the opportunity to come there and simply forget about everything else other than the art. Mm. Well, I may be talking to three ladies here, but uh, dance is not just the domain of only ladies. Are there boys in the uh, school? They have been many uh, male students who've I mean, come and are, gone. There are quite a few under training, oh, okay. yeah. but uh, fewer male dancers choose to make it as a yeah. profession because sure. in India the society is such that men are uh, pressurized to earn very yeah. quickly and support their families, yeah. which then takes away time from practicing. And when you lose practice, you lose form. So all that has a snowball effect. That's why fewer uh, male dancers choose to live in the way mm -hmm. we live because it requires complete dedication. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to live away. You can't go out to work. Practice is just 
time for practice. So that's why we have fewer male uh, performers in our company, but we have had. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, how did you make it into the list of these uh, performers under Confluence coming to Australia? We just got invited. In the usual way, mm. somebody invites us, we come and dance. And right. So I think we represent um, Odyssey as it is becoming and, and taking form now. Uh, we have lived for 26 years practicing, breathing, eating, sleeping, the dance. Do we do nothing else? <laughs> so obviously the style that we do has also sort of transformed and become something new, something different. We have taken it to a global level. We perform all over the world constantly. And so I think we represent what India does, mm. in a sense. So perhaps that's the reason why we get invited. Yeah, I was, I was wondering, there are so many dance forms. Odyssey is, of course, one of them. Are, is your school only dedicated to Odyssey dance form only? Yes, now. We started off with wanting to make it for all the classical forms. We had Bharatanatyam, uh, we had uh, Mohini Atam, and we have Kathak. But what happened was, it was extreme pressure for us, the Odissi group was earning the money to sustain the whole mm. Gurukul. Yes. And so at some point I decided, I just, we cannot do it. Yes. It has to be a self-sustaining system for each Gurukula. And we have invited people from all over India to anybody who wants to build it but will sustain it on their own is fine otherwise the pressure on us is the only ODC yeah, group will becomes too much and so we're it's on hold mm. yeah. yeah that's the question I was going to ask you actually yeah. how is it make how are you making it commercially viable to tell you the truth uh, we have worked very very hard to be perhaps the only ensemble on an international level to be able to be self-sustaining we earn the resources to completely sustain the village. Mm. However, it is not easy, as you know, for an artist to be doing that on a long-term basis. So we are constantly looking for funds. And hopefully we have set up a, a, a complete uh, proposal right now mm. uh, to ask people to help and support us as much as they can. And that's constant for mm. an artist. Yes. So what kind of uh, future plans you have drawn up for yourself? Well, I think uh, certainly we want to be the place which represents excellence. Uh, I think India should have, in the sense that when you go out there and perform and people see you, the thing that motivates us or keeps us inspired or makes us most happy is when people come back and say, you know, you made me proud to be Indian. I think that's an incredibly important thing that all of the next generation is looking towards. They need a role model, they need something they can feel good about, and something that is deep, something that is culturally rich, and represents who we are. So I think uh, more and more of our audience is younger. Older, you know, people have always been interested, but younger people come and say, classical Indian dance, and they look at it and they say, you know what, it makes me feel good. Mm. That to me is success in a way because this is what we're trying to preserve and popularize and take into the next generation. And so I think um, you know, that's, that's the aim, mm. to be yeah, excellent yes. and good at what we do. Now, there is a lot of uh, fusion that's going on in music, in dance and everywhere else. And of course, throw in Bollywood, so uh, you will get the whole lot in India. Yeah. Are you uh, concentrating on pure Odyssey or do you want to uh, look at the possibility of a fusion. You know, this is a highly debatable topic. Uh, I want, I, I, I don't want to go there because for me, fusion is sometimes absolute confusion. Mm -hmm. But uh, dance in India has never been stagnant. Neither has music. Classical dance means you have a framework, a structure given to you, which is a basic vocabulary, and you have to be able to develop it and write your own story. That's the idea. So in the end, what we do with the dance has to be your own. But to be able to tell your story effectively and be able to communicate an idea, it has also to be um, viable for the times that you're living in. So in that sense, I think that, that's what I said, the Nithigram style has changed uh, dramatically. Right. Uh, 
it has transformed the vocabulary has expanded uh, greatly from the time that guruji taught me you know i'm guru kilchan mahapatra's student but uh, it will change it must change but whether it has to be fusion i don't know it can be a conversation but i don't know whether it has to be fusion uh, what what kind of age group you said a uh, lot of youngsters are now taking to dance yeah. which uh, a heartening thing to know yeah. what what's the kind of average age group that uh, you we have different training programs uh, we the largest group of uh, children younger children learn under our sunday day program where uh, the age group is from 3 and 1/2 to any age so and uh, it's also a outreach program for the village crowd around us which is mostly below poverty line and uh, we feel that learning dance makes them grow in confidence and makes them better human beings and develop taste sense of excellence and they take it to anything they do in life that may not necessarily become performers then we have lot of day scholar programs where students of any age can come to us and train in bangalore city and in nrithigram then there is uh, a very um, a few uh, children who come and try to train to become professionals and that starts from age 15 onwards till about 24 because it's 6 years of residential training after which they become professionals there are also workshops which is open to any age that's one month for adults or one week for children uh, between 7 and 13 years of children yeah right so Uh, i'm sure there are a lot of uh, youngsters in uh, sydney in australia in general uh, looking at uh, this program uh, if there is one advice you want to give them uh, about indian classical dance in fact my daughter herself has learned bharatanatyam um, and what kind of advice would you give i would say that if it is your passion then follow it it is deeply deeply satisfying it has a great deal of learning it is a spiritual upliftment of sorts which comes but comes with time so it's not something you can do in a hurry but you can certainly make something of it which i think gives you back tenfold hundredfold and it has something uh, gorima used to say gorima was protima we used to call her gorima she used to say dance is a jealous husband <laughs> once it consumes you it really consumes you there is no space for anything else really so if you have that kind of passion yeah you should follow it yeah. well patience patience is what's required there are no shortcuts to learning classical dances because it's such a rich heritage for it, they have lived for thousands of years they carry within themselves uh, aesthetic values of india there are a lot of a uh, uh, lot of things the repository of so many things literature poetry philosophy religious ideas so one has to sculpture yeah architecture so one has to have a complete understanding of it and dance opens the door to every aspect mm-hmm. and uh, it kind of the thing is that without having wealth in your having a bank balance suddenly you feel rich you when you're performing when you're practicing you feel so rich so it is a blessing to feel so rich and complete and fulfilled when you're practicing so it has that and it's extremely therapeutic healing and um, enriching in many ways i think more and more people should definitely practice it you've been standing for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah Uh, well if you love dancing i would say um, do it with full heart because at the end of the day you it's the most satisfying thing and that's what we all finally look towards to and like didi's told that it's very enriching and very in- informative and you can keep learning forever it's unbelievable how much we have to learn no matter how much you practice every day there's lots every day is a learning day for me yeah yeah well everyone's dream is to come and perform at the opera house in sydney and uh, how was it uh, to perform there and uh, how was the australian crowd well we were sold out both days yes. that's a good thing uh which means there's people who want to see you dance but the opera house is beautiful it's just such an exquisite little space it has and the, the we danced at the uh, studio where it's very intimate it's perfect yeah, for it's the kind of dance we do the audience is really close yes. you know you have a live interaction with them on a very sort of intimate level 
the, crew uh, the was fantastic crew. Fantastic. I mean, it, they were wonderful. Yeah. It was a great, great experience. Yeah. yeah. And the audience? They were wonderful, like mm. absolutely wonderful, both days. So you're traveling to Canberra from here and yes. then on to other cities. Yes. Have a great stay in Australia. And uh, I'm sure you will come back. You must have fallen in love with Sydney. <laughs> so you must be coming back. Uh, Sydney has to fall in love with us for <laughs> us to come back. Yeah. It has already. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.